All right, we're rolling. I'm here with Jeff Cohn. Hey, Mark Masters Jeff here. Cohn himself, right here. Uh, we're gonna do a. This is gonna be a little shorter than usual. We're in downtown Denver right now, and we're headed to the South Comedy Works Club. 14 mile drive, 26 minutes. What's happening tonight at the South Club, Jeff? Well, we've got. Um, I think this is Group Two, Night One of the annual New Faces contest. This is the semifinals. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, some great. I didn't look at the lineup, but I think Noah Reynolds is among the lineup. Yep. And uh, Evan Johnson, I talked to him the other night. They're all very psyched about competing, and I, you know, I love the competition aspect of it. But I love that everybody's just got such a unique, uh, weird, hilarious uh, style, you know. Yeah. And it's a, for me, it's about just the fun and the variety of yeah. our scene. Yeah. You know? Should be a great show, and you oh, yeah. are one of the semifinalists as well. Uh, not in this group. Not in this group. I'm but, in group four. So okay. um, coming up soon. Night one for me is at the Downtown Club, and that is uh, <clears throat> Wednesday, October 9th, awesome. 8 o'clock. Come down, be there. Yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, and then night two will be at the South Club on the uh, 21st, which is uh, Monday night. Nice. Terrific. I'm excited. Uh, so how long? That's an amazing uh, credit or uh, accolade to advance oh, to the man. semifinals. Congratulations. Oh, how thanks. Long is, thanks so much. Terrific view of downtown here in the school. Mm -hmm. like mile high over here. You guys can't see it, but trust me, it's a weekend and we're enjoying uh, it. Boy, that's pretty. Um, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, you know, uh, a total of seven years. I started in 2012. Um, overheard my friend uh, at a uh, New Year's party at the end of 2011 bragging about how he had tried stand-up comedy and um, and I thought, oh man, I got to talk to this guy. First of all, I thought I'm I'm probably funnier than him, uh, <laughs> even though I hadn't seen him. <laughs> Good to have some I just felt like I was, yeah. And but then I thought, um, man, I, I should uh, find out how to get into it because I had no idea. And he, what he did, he actually um, put together his own show at a Christian coffee house down in Littleton called, I believe it was called Solid Ground. Oh, I'm actually there now. That's funny. Yeah. So we. Uh, I know somebody lives near there. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of an interesting place, but anyway, so that show, he put me on, gave me five minutes on that show. Before I had even done an open mic, here I am on a quote-unquote showcase, and it was like really low budget. There was no stage or stage lights or microphone or anything. You just stood uh, next to some couches and talked to people that were in this uh, reading room. Right. And I, I was horrible. Um, that was, so that was May of 2012. Um, and it's funny because I had that basically meant that I had six months to put something together. And I, all I did was I ended up kind of winging it and telling a couple weird stories or whatever. And it was just god awful. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and so in 2012 and 13, I didn't do it that much. I, I didn't uh, didn't know how I felt about it. I, I knew I wanted to, to like try it again. But I was kind of maybe a hobbyist at that stage, and I'd come out maybe once a month. But then in 2014, um, I just I was talking to uh, another fellow comic, uh, Bear Quaddlebaum, who you uh, some of you might know, great guy. Uh, I had done an open mic. It was one of those official High Plains Comedy Fest open mics, and I went to it. And <laughs> I brought my then girlfriend and my best friend Doug to watch me, and it was that was the worst thing I could have done. <laughs> Because I, I ate it so hard, you wouldn't even believe it. Um, but Bear, I, I go outside and I'm all depressed, and Bear's like, uh, "Hey, what's what's wrong, homie? You look like you just died or something." I go, "Oh, I died. It was horrible." And uh, he goes, "Well, man, if you want to get better, you gotta like I see you once in a while. You need to come out here every night." And I don't know, something about that conversation really lit my fire, and so. Um, long story shorter I, um, I guess that would have been like August of 2014 from that point on I'm like that's it I'm in this and I uh, have pretty much been doing it like six or seven nights a week since then it's been crazy like five years five years yeah. wow awesome. so five solid years and seven shows, total you're getting results well hey thanks man it's just it's been fun uh, I guess where I'm going on Thursday by the way Thursday Thursday uh, flying to oh, Red Clay, you're going yeah, to the I'm, next I'm Red Clay Comedy Festival in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Jeff was That's... on the show last year on the yeah. festival. Pretty cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, so seven years. That's a long. That's a long time. And and you 
would you say the secret to your recent success is maybe the, the regularity going up every night? Do you think that was good advice from there? Oh, it, you know, absolutely. Because it just, I think what it allowed me to um, do over the long haul is, and, and it's been a very slow, very slow um, growth in this aspect, but it like it really allowed me to get comfortable to be myself on stage. Nice. And so like when I watch myself now, I'm like, oh hey, okay, that's that's the real me. A lot more. That's not the that weird persona that I. Because there, I don't know what it is. There's this thing with when we're new. You know how you you hear this all the time that. Uh, well, I'm totally funny in front, of, in front of my friends, and then you get up on stage and you're not. And I think it's because, oh my God, there's people staring at me now, and there's lights, and there's a microphone and all that, and you just kind of go behind these layers or something like that. Yeah. And I think it you can try take... And be a funny persona. Right. And instead of just... emulate some other comedian you've seen or heard yeah. and respect. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. I think it's great to learn from all those greats and everything, but I think... There's something that gets in our head where we say to ourselves, uh, "Oh, they they couldn't possibly want to see the real me. They what if they don't like that? You know?" Right. And I don't know if that's fully a conscious thing, but that's kind of where I was. Yeah. Yeah, your stuff is really personal. It's really good. Your your latest. Oh man, yeah, I appreciate that. Material. Uh, huh. So how is uh? So this is it's interesting that you've been a comic that long and all in the Denver area. A lot of people I talk to have, who have been doing comedy about as long as you tend to have transplanted here. Uh, how has, I guess, the open mic scene changed or comedy works or, or anything in the scene? What's um, different? You know, the, the biggest thing that I've noticed with our open mic scene is that uh, it is that influx of new blood from other places and at varying experience levels. And I've noticed um, there's this crop of new comics that have only been doing it a year, maybe a little over a year. And they came, I mean, we all have growth to go through and they have a lot of improving to do as, as I do and you do, but it's like, it seems like they've jump started, you know, like, you know, like look at PJ Johnson, fellow comic. He's up in, I think he moved down here, but I think he's from Boulder. Yeah. Um, that kid, I mean, we did the Four Corners uh, comedy festival. Me and him, we, we were both on it, and we both got on the, the Best of the Fest show, which was great. Um, so we drove out to Durango for that. But he's, I don't know if he's at a year yet, or maybe uh, just a hair less than a year, but man, just like, just a big splash. He's getting all kinds of showcase. Yeah. Uh, showcases and he's a um, great writer and has a lot of you know just natural charisma yeah so huge energy it's stage. like I'm sitting there going man oh, I'm jealous how did you get you know like it took me like I think I was five or six years in before I felt like I had even that level of comfortability yeah do you know if he has a theater or performance background yeah we were talking about that he had told me that he had done some at a very early age in elementary school he just jumped on stage he, they had like a little theater little productions and um, I think it was theater and I'm, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly if he did any like music stuff but I think yeah, both of those I, things the musician thing like I, well, sometimes when people have incredible stage presence really early on yeah I, it doesn't surprise me when I find out they were in a touring band for a long time not yeah, necessarily like, a successful one but yeah, like Zach Moss was telling me that that he before he started comedy he'd been in a band uh, for a yeah. while. So that explains his kind at least of natural, with the stage yeah. right and uh, being in front of people. For sure, and um, but so that you know PJ is an example, and then just um, you know like I'm trying to think like uh, like Sam Gates and Austin Black, and I, maybe they've been doing it a little bit longer, but yeah. both of them are great writers. And then is, is uh, Sam a transplant? Do you know? Um, you know, I know I, I Austin to, came uh, from yeah, Iowa. Austin came from Iowa, um, and uh, Sam, I I thought he did, but I might be wrong. Uh, I'd have to ask him. But um, and so just all these great writers. Oh, and Titus Milan, who was on my night of round one, he advanced. Yeah. To the semifinals. He's terrific. Very and personal just, again, yep. and he has an improv background. So like he's been doing improv. Sure, so he's yeah. been doing some stage stuff. 
Improv but, really makes a difference. The people I know that did improv first, um, you can just see how it really helps them be in the moment and, you know, they can do crowd work or riff on something. Um, yeah. You know. Huh. Fascinating. Okay, so, so there's some young, there's some really good, fresh talent. Absolutely, scene. and there's also, and I wanted to mention too that in that big wave, there are these incredibly talented uh, female comics who've come in that have really helped explode the scene and, and make it better and more interesting. And I, I mention them because each one of them, um, right out of the gate, started their own unique show, like independent show. Like Hannah Jones has the show called Finding Love, and um, I'm going to go watch that. Um, and it's so funny. And she she's so talented and yeah. has a unique voice. She uh um, she I, I don't she wasn't on your round. Was she, she was also on my round. She yeah. was. She went up in the first spot. Mm. She crushed. And you know me. It I was sit incredible. in the back yeah, and she I take notes great... on everybody. And I had her advancing for sure. I had and her advancing before I even she, got uh, on to the show. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yep, she's one I mean, of them. she had a killer set. And yeah. her closer, like, people were losing it. And I've, I've been to ten of those rounds. And yeah. I don't think I've seen anybody do as well in the very first spot of the shows I've been to. Well, and she, she had to follow crushed. Sam Talent. Because if you remember, they brought Sam Talent. Uh, oh, yeah. Elliot Woolsey. Minute. Yep. Like, Elliot like, Woolsey was the host, so he opened. And then they bring Sam up. Uh, to do, I think it was. I think it was just for laughs. Just for laughs audition, yeah, practice. Secret at the time. And he just obliterated the place, and then she had to follow him. Yeah. And did great. Yeah, she. Yeah. But like her, and so then yeah, she's terrific. Uh, yeah. And I, and the the other uh, Sarah Benson is another oh, one. I just saw this. Um, she just did this YouTube video uh, promo thing with uh, Megan DePonso, who's also a real awesome talent, uh, a comic in our scene, and. Um, they're just I, I love the creativity and Sarah's a transplant for sure. And she's so a Hannah. transplant. And yeah, yeah both yeah. and I think again, I don't know if both of them are newbies or I think they've been doing it for a while, a yeah. couple of years I, maybe. They're yeah. pretty experienced. I think Sarah's been doing it like five years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, she started in college. But I think that's in general, that's I love just the what's been happening in uh, our scene in the open mic scene. Um, not only just the, this fresh new um, influx, but also I think, uh, I don't know, it feels like we've become more of a community nice. uh, in this scene, and I really like that. That's awesome. What a nice thing to say. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, so here's a question I, I like to ask people. If you could, so when would, well, let's, let's clarify something. When was your first open mic? Was it that High Plains one? Do you know where, like, what no, bar no. it was um, at? Or? So going, rewind back to 2012, like I said, that coffee house was the first. That was the showcase. But that was a showcase. Yeah. So then uh, the next month, and this was the first open mic I had ever been on, there used to be a monthly open mic on uh, Sunday nights at the Bovine Metropolis okay. Theater, which is another improv theater. Um, and again, no microphone, but at least there were stage lights and a stage this time. Okay. And... Will was the the guy who booked me on the showcase. He was also the host of that open mic, and it was a it was a family friendly open mic. Okay. And so, um, uh, uh, lost my train of thought. Um, Bovine. Bovine Metropolis. Yeah. So that was my first official open mic. Okay. And uh, you know, ate it again, but maybe not quite as bad because I had more of an idea of ahead of time what I was going to try sure. to say, you know. So if you could uh, time travel back right now yeah. and talk to yourself, give yourself a little pep talk, some quick advice, what do you think would be the most impactful advice you could give yourself Oh my God. for um, your comedy journey? Uh, record every set. Ah, good uh, one. Uh, two parts. Part A, record every set. Part B, or maybe the reverse of those, um, just get out every night, just grind, you know. Terrific. That's awesome. So, what benefit do you get? From, do you record every set now? Yeah, and sometimes I miss, you know. Sure. Um, right, and what benefit do you think that gives you? Well, so it, it kind of. I remember when I, when I really caught on to like the power of it was, um, I had there was another comedian named uh, Laura Lyons who's now in the uh, Seattle scene. She moved away, but she used to run um, an open mic at the Brick on York on Colfax. 
and I was up there, I was doing my thing, and, uh, you know, I, it felt like I was engaging the crowd and all that, and surf I was getting some laughs, and then I get home, and I'm listening to myself, and I'm like, what, what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> it's like, I thought I was making these really good points, but I was so all over the place that I couldn't even remember what I was trying to say, huh. if that makes sense. It's like, it's weird, like, when you're inside your head, you're like, oh yeah, I know exactly where I'm going, but then when you hear yourself back, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Huh. So what that did is it kind of made me really concentrate on um, not just tighten up the writing, like trimming the fat, as we say, but also, okay, figure out what my main point is that I'm trying to make, and then write the jokes around that point, you know what I mean? Right. Huh. Okay, great. So it helps you refine your on-stage presence and sometimes right. detect when your inner monologue about what you're doing is different from reality. Sure, yeah, exactly. And, and that's just one example. Over the years, it's helped me realize, oh, I'm going too fast, slow it down put a pause after that joke, wait to see if they'll laugh or give them room to laugh, yeah. you know, just things like that. And then, and then I also started uh, having friends uh, videotape me, and that's even more impactful because then I can see, oh, what am I doing with my hands, you know, right. is that distracting, you know, so there's all those little technical aspects. Yeah, awesome. Any other one grinding? What do you, what do you think the value in grinding is? <clears throat> um, Going up every night. I think it, it, it just keeps, it's kind of like, hate to use this analogy because it, it's just used all the time, but it's like working out in the gym. You're just constantly building that muscle or different groups of muscles. Um, I think for me, it gives me a chance to get a more accurate read on how a joke is, is working. Because like Wednesday night, I'll try to hit three or four mics in the same night, and sometimes I will on a given week. Which is so, uh, can oh, you sorry. name the Oh, mics? yeah, yeah. So, uh, Rising Sun, and, and that, that one actually ended. But oh, I'm, is uh, it over? Yeah, Bummer. Because uh, okay. I think the venue, something happened with them. Okay. So, but Danny Ram Ramos was the host. Yeah. Um, and was, Tim, Tim Coleman. Fun, really, yeah, yeah. really was, and, and he was a great host. So there's that one, and then uh, Voodoo Comedy Playhouse, Ben Bryant is the current host. That's a great one. That is a cool That's one of my favorites because... What time do you get there usually? Uh, you know, I get there a little early because I like to kind of write and just kind of be in my own uh, space for a while. Okay. And then uh, Streets of London is the late one. And then, then there's another one. The fourth one is Pride and Swagger, but now that I think about it, they move to uh, Thursday night. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, That's an amazing thing about Denver that you can hit multiple mics in one night. You know, some yeah. smaller markets or even some markets that are probably our size don't necessarily have as many open mics. No, or do. they, you know, like I talk to a lot of people from other cities and, and they're spread out so much yes, and it's hard point. to get to them and, you know, things like that. But ours are kind of all in this little clustered yeah. uh, area, you know. Awesome. What were we talking about right before? Oh, oh so what Just is the value, the value of grinding? grinding? Yeah, yeah. So... It's nice to be able to pick a night and say, hey, I want to try to work on these three jokes, but I want to like switch up the order or play with the intro or try a different wording. And if you can go from mic to mic to mic, you have that opportunity to try it different ways and see what feels the best. And then the next night you can go out, do it again and find out, okay, was that laugh I got at Voodoo on Wednesday night, was that a genuine laugh? Can I repeat that? And right. So you just kind of, uh, I don't know, keep polishing it, punching it up, as we say. Yeah. Um, sure. Well, it's working. And, you you're know, getting results. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I'm trying. How to, do you? Uh, so here's a question for you. Yeah. So your your upcoming set is it seven minutes? Um, the six minutes. Six minutes. <clears throat> and Where do you? So a lot of mics, you get in three, four minutes usually. Where usually. Do you practice yeah. your six minute set. How do you? What's your strategy? Well, sometimes <clears throat> it's just a matter of, okay, um, at mic A, I will work on the first three minutes of that, and then the next mic, I'll work on the, the second three minutes of that. Okay. But uh, then there's, um, 
you know, there's opportunities like um, the Thick Skin show, you know, that's, again, you're still not doing six minutes, but you've got like four, four and a half minutes. Yeah. Well, uh, what a great place to practice because it's at oh, Comedy Works. for sure. And the, yeah. what's been great is that there's been times when I've gotten up on Thick Skin and then the next night I'm on New Talent Night, so I can do like a dry run uh, and see how it feels. Amazing. Uh, That's but great. in answer to your question though, um, the nice thing is there's some mics that are kind of further out of town, or not out of town, but on the edge of town. Like uh, Peter Cohen has a, a mic that he produces at Eek's Tavern, which is way out in uh, like Southwest um, Littleton. Okay. And you know, there's not as many comics, so he'll be like, oh, do 10 if you want, do 10 or 12. Nice. So yeah. every now and then you can do longer sets. And um, um, I wanted to mention Streets, uh, again, the late night. I called it Streets of London. It's now Streets Denver. There was a whole thing on that. <laughs> um, and But Matt Kobos, another great host, he he has a real laid back approach. I mean, if you're, if you're getting obnoxiously long, he's gonna be like, all right, get out of there. But a lot of times he'll give you that breathing room to do like six or seven minutes. Yeah, that's true. And that hard room just, now. It is a tough room. But again, I like that sometimes because it's like, I don't know, you, you kind of got to get, you got to figure out how to put up with that and kind of stand there and take it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, or more importantly, it, learn yeah. how to engage even that room. Yes, you very know? valuable. The, the downside that I've found is sometimes it's difficult to find out if you're getting laughter for a joke, like you have a new tag you want to try out. Right. Sometimes barely anybody is even in the room to listen. Right. The weather's nice outside, everybody's on the patio, etc. To to the listeners, viewers, whatever, we're gonna take a quick detour to try and lengthen we're trying to stretch this uh, episode. So we're gonna we're gonna go to a fancy fine dining establishment right now. You'll figure it out pretty quick. Um, yeah, streets, awesome, great place to spend some extra time. Yep. And right across the street from Voodoo Donuts. Yep, and I, I try to avoid that part, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, another thing I love about streets, um, and I will also say this uh, same quality about Lion's, Li Lion's Lair, and we used to have a mic called the Squire, which is infamous yeah. as, like, the meanest mic in America. And going up and doing time at those mics, I think, is the most valuable for me because... Hold that thought. Yeah. All right. Time out. Uh, do you know what you want? Yeah, I'm just going to get like a small fries and a small Sprite. You get a burger. Get something. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay. that hungry. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a small fry and a small Sprite. And I'll take a... Uh, I take that back. I will get a plain hamburger. Okay. And a plain hamburger. And... a uh, Regular. Yeah, regular. Size. Uh... And I'll take a junior bacon cheeseburger, no mayo, the four for four dollar thing, uh, with spicy nuggets, and uh, what do I want to drink? Can I get a lemonade with that? For sure. And you said spicy nuggets, what sauce? Um, uh, honey mustard. Alright. And then, no, that's perfect. Uh, no, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Jeff Cohn, the uh, cheap date. Thanks, buddy. Oh, hey, man. No, I appreciate it. it. I, uh, yeah, I forgot you're paying. I should have ordered the lobster <laughs> and the caviar and the, uh, <laughs> you know. Thank you. Toast. Thank you. Uh, all right, so. Oh, thank you. Um, Squire. So the Squire, uh, that one was founded by um, Greg Baumhauer, um, and it was known as the meanest mic in America. Um, Greg was a uh, Greg's a great guy, but he he loves roasting uh, comics, especially if they do a bad set, because it's the philosophy of, well, hey, look, um, you a you need to know that yeah, that wasn't good. Uh, let's not reward bad behavior, um, work harder, get better. Uh, but also, you know, you need to develop um, 
you know, pardon the uh, the phrasing, but a thick skin, hence yeah. the hence the show thick skin. But um, and he said to me once, he was like, um, "Thank you." We were on our way to a show up in uh, the Colorado in Fort Collins. He said, "You know, think about it. When you get out on the road and you start doing those first road gigs, the one nighters, they're often at some, you know, country bar, and it it those are rough, rough rooms. And if you can't handle a little good-natured ribbing right. with the squire, what are you going to do when you're in front of a real crowd and and it's just you? You're not with your little so buddies and stuff like that. Were you there when like Adam Keaton Holland or Sam Talent were like no, getting I, started? No, I wasn't was that there. Before then? No, that was way before that. Oh, and and Greg, when Greg ran the Squire, it was way before that. Um, and I had gone and seen a couple of them while he was still kind of at the tail end, but he basically uh, turned the squire over to Sam Talent. Um, okay. And I got to uh, go a handful of times when, when Sam was running it. And, you know, yeah, it was still pretty, it was a rough room, but it really uh, kind of taught me how to pull up some energy and strength and just kind of yell at that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> project and, and, and really yell <laughs> at that crowd. and. And I noticed that, holy crap, that works. Like people, when, when you really uh, kind of give yourself that uh, that kickstart and speak with some authority, boy, that really can make a difference. Um, you know, even if your joke isn't that well written yet or it's kind of rough, but if you have some energy and personality behind it, you can squeeze that laugh out, you know, or at least you can get their attention. Yeah. Um, so. You know, Lion's Lair and the Old Squire, and uh, now, now I forgot which one were we talking about that led up to that. I don't remember. Just a, a, a rough. Oh, oh, uh, streets. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Being yeah. a tougher room. I I love continuing to do rooms like that because you know you got to know how to um, get the attention of you know it might be almost two in the morning. There might only be three or four tired drunks in the room, um, you gotta be able to get them. You, you have to perform for them as though it's 300 like fully awake sober people. And that's advice that uh, Anthony Crawford gave me a couple years ago. Um, I think like maybe I was three years in and I was complaining that, man, what's the point of going up this late? There's only three people left in here and they put me on second to last and Crawford's like, I'm going up last, dude. Watch what I do. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and so, like, I yeah. went up and just ate it. They they weren't even paying attention to me at all. Sure. Crawford goes up. Those three people were laughing their asses. He's, he's incredible. And I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're almost at our destination. Uh, I see you probably more than any other comic at the New Faces competitions in the back, kind of watching maybe taking notes. What are you doing there? And what what are you what's your goal tonight going into Comedy Network? So just to be clear, we're not performing tonight. Right, we're not this on is, the show. This is a watching <clears throat> mission. Uh, what are you hoping to get out of it tonight? Well, for me, um, you know, I'm thinking, uh, I mean, obviously, whether it's performing or watching, fun is my priority. I just, I love to just kind of really let it entertain me and have fun with it. Um, but I'm also watching for like, okay, What's, uh, what are some of the differences between what I'll just call an uneven performance that it might have some good spots in it. It might be a solid performance, but there might've been eh, just a couple kinks in it uh, versus somebody who's like just really um, at that top level, they've got that it factor or whatever. And I wanna always try to learn, okay, what, what is that? What are those uh, differences? Yeah. The last time that you and I were sitting next to each other, I think it was last week, um, Anthony Crawford and um, Noe Noel. I wasn't there. Uh, you weren't there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were. But um, they were in that group. And uh, by the end of the night, after watching everybody, I'm like, it's going to be Noe and Crawford and, and possibly Zach Moss, too. He was right in that level. Um, and... I really thought about that. Okay, what what is it about their performances? Number one, all three of their stage presence was just so um, undeniable. They just spoke with authority and just 
spilling on myself here. Um, and all three of them kind of, they didn't necessarily do crowd work, but they were kind of, you could just feel a real connection with the crowd. They were talking with the crowd, not at them. Right, they were in the moment, they were yep. present. And then there were a couple other comics that, like I said, they had great jokes and got some good laughs. But there wasn't quite that connection. It felt like they were really focused on their words and maybe how they were delivering them. So, um, you know, you could kind of tell, oh, they, maybe they're in their head too much. Yeah. And it's so amazing how uh, any comedy crowd can sense that. They may not know it consciously, but they can feel it. And they're going to pull back a little bit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I, you know, I want to, like, continue to see if I can pick out things like that. Right. Huh. And also, uh, another fun thing, I want to see how accurate my predictions are going to be. Okay. I have my little notebook. And, do you, uh, you want to share any of those predictions, or are those private? Well, um, since I don't remember who's all on, and I only know that Evan and uh, Noah Reynolds are on. Evan, Noah, um, uh, Janae. Janae Burris, okay. Um, we'll look up the list, and just once we park, which will yeah. be in like a minute, we'll, we'll go over the list. Um, yeah, I, before we do that, I just want to thank you for taking the time. We'll, we'll do a little recap after the show. Sure. Um, are you going to any mics tonight, or do you want to go I, to any mics? Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, possibly Lion's Lair. Okay. Uh, I was up Terrific. super, super late last night down in the spring, so I don't know if I'll okay. have well, the uh, juice, <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'd be happy to drive you over there. That'd be great. Hit that. Um, I'm going to turn the lights on so it's not so dark. Yep. And, uh, okay, we'll just park right here, and I'll look up cool. the list real quick. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, I'm so impressed. Like, you're you're so wise and knowledgeable oh, well, I don't know about I mean. the Denver comedy scene. And, uh, all right. Let's see if Evan's notes probably works. And, um, but I think that, um, you know, it's, somebody said to me that, um, Okay, like I was talking to uh, like an LA comic and they were pointing out that he goes, you know, Denver, it's not a destination comedy career maker, you know, because we don't have industry here. He was right. he was saying that, well, you know, the thing about LA is that the film industry, Hollywood, music industry, all these different industries are there. And so there's so many more opportunities to have like a real career or a higher level career, whatever. Um, and then New York is the same way. But he was like, like Denver may not be at that level yet with industry, but this might be the best uh, scene in the whole country to learn comedy. Because yeah. of all these different independent shows, all the different open mics. And I was really um, impressed by what he said. And that made me even take a deeper look at, okay, then, boy, I really, what a grand opportunity. You could really... Uh, you know, there's a lot of meat on that bone, so to speak. Yeah. You know, so I think it's making me try to work harder even more than I have been. And, you know. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you're uh, group two semifinalists in order. Uh, I don't know what this order is, but it's the one that's on like the Comedy List website, Comedy Works website. Yeah. Aaron Maslow. Okay. Danny Ramos. Evan Johnson. Greg Ellis, who I don't even know who that is. I, I met him. Great guy. Okay. Uh, comedian and musician, uh, hilarious. Been, been around for a while, or uh, yeah. A lot of times when I don't know the people, there are people who've been around for a while and don't hit the mics. Anymore. He's kind of been in and out of our scene, but he'll he does a lot of stuff in like northern Colorado and uh, other oh, places. Okay, that's uh, another possibility. Yep. Jacob Rupp, okay. hilarious. <sighs> Janae Burris, yep. John Davis, Corey David, Noah Reynolds, Steve Gillespie, wow. Steve Vanderplug. Oof, man. He's me they're. Unbelievable! Those are all incredible comedians. Yeah, I mean, there's not a there's not a weak uh, comedian in that group. It's no. amazing, and I mean, okay, I will I will say this because um, they usually choose two on this first night. Okay. Uh, and I don't, mm, I, I know that one of those is going to be Janae Burris okay. because she just knows how to, or just she's got this methodical approach to building her, you know her act and then when it's time for a clutch thing like this she's clutch yeah she'll just nail right. it right and then i'm thinking you know maybe I'll, I'll hedge my bets and say out of those others i i think that um 
like Jacob Rupp is uh, super, super, super uh, uh, consistent and strong. Noah Reynolds has that it factor. He's such a loose cannon. Uh, Aaron Maslow, I mean, any of the, like, Evan Johnson is a, a tremendous writer and, um, you know, has a great uh, uh, likabil likability on stage. Yeah. So I think any one of those. Oh, and then Corey David. Um, That's my surprise pick. I'm right picking there. him as the dark horse <laughs> yeah. because nobody realizes. Whitest guy in the room. Yeah. Dark horse. <laughs> Whitest guy in the room, dark horse. <laughs> but he. Uh, yeah, I have him. I don't know. I he's just a transplant know that a yep. lot of people don't know. He's got a ton of experience, and yep. he's very funny. I he's saw, on the road a lot. I saw, so the, that... I saw the competition that where he advanced, and he annihilated, like yep. absolutely demolished. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, well, I don't. I wouldn't say hopefully. I think I hope everybody advances, but everybody can't. Yeah, advance. everybody can't advance. So you know, there can't we'll see. Be we'll like check a... in afterwards on the drive over to Lions Lair. I want to chat some more. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, check out notgoodyet.com. My book, it's uh, buried in the back. I'm down to one copy left uh, physically. but uh, And I'm in the book. He, yeah. mentioned, he mentioned me. Uh, he was covering the red clay. Let's see if I can dig it up. Yeah. I'm not driving. I don't yeah, know if we I have to quote to it. it, though. But no. <laughs> So he, sure. I remember the quote, though. Uh, my mention was that uh, he's covering the Red Clay Comedy Festival 2018, and I was there, and he, he says, uh, Jeff Cohn may be the most uh, weird and awkward <laughs> comedian on the whole festival, and he would probably admit that, too. And, and I do. Yeah. Um, but I thought, I'm not there sure how to feel about that. Get it at Amazon. Get it at the Denver Library if you are yeah. want it for no, free. No, but Amazon. Or you talk know, to we, me. Money, or yeah. Mutiny Information Cafe or Tattered Cover. Any of those. Anyways, uh, all right, we're going to show. I'm excited. Hell yeah, bro. All right, let's cool. do it. All right, bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. All right, we're back. The show's over. It's uh, 9.45. Man, and what uh, a barn burner. Holy crap. <laughs> what a great show. Uh, just real quick programming note. We're going to drive to Lion's Lair for Denver's longest-running open mic. Uh, mm. 21 minutes, 10 miles away from the South Club. Let's make yep. sure we're going to leave the lights on. Uh, lesson learned from previous recordings. So... <laughs> Holy crap, like everybody well, crushed. I just, it was unbelievable. 11, 11 contestants, or whatever, 11 I think it was 11, peers, yeah. comics, um, whatever you want to call them. But just that, I mean, I, I loved how, um, you know, Elliot Woolsey got up there and, you know, did some crowd work and really, like, loosened up the crowd and kind of messed with them and, and got yeah. them, you know, and, and I love that interaction, like how he's at that level where, um, yeah, kind of jolt him and... and um, you know, kind of get, uh, make it personal, you know, and I don't mean like this is personal in that sense, but like, you know, like, uh, the, it felt real, you know? Yeah. And then, so the crowd, yeah, he did a good job. I mean, yeah. it was a, it was a light crowd, I think would be a generous it's, way. To I think, yeah, there, it. there might've been 150 people, um, Monday night. <laughs> That's pretty tough. That many. Apparently the down, this club, isn't open on Monday nights usually, so that definitely. That's right. I remember he said that, and he goes, "I'm surprised you guys found it." <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was really impressed with like, um, so Evan Johnson drew the number one spot, and that can be a tough spot to be the opener. But he just came out and clobbered. Like, yeah, he was terrific. And his writing has just gotten so good, and yeah. uh, just um, I was, his he, delivery, you know, just great. Yeah, I even feel like he dressed the part for the South Club. It'll be interesting to see it. <laughs> Like, I bet he dresses differently for the downtown club. I, I think he always has that, but he's a snappy dresser always. Yeah. He's probably the best dressed uh, comedian. And, the local uh, scene, yeah. 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 He was, I like, and I thought, what, what I thought was interesting about what he was wearing tonight is that, by the way, comics watching this, South Club stop sign by the Papados. I got a very bad ticket from a cop <laughs> over here because I rolled this stop sign once. Full stop. Coming out of comedy. Always, like, always full, full stop. stop. <laughs> that was like a real hassle. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, I thought he, he kind of like he was dressed a little less fashionable than he normally is, like a little more like huh, okay. I, I don't didn't, know. Didn't uh, catch that. Golf club, country club, kind of. Uh, I I think he was. I, maybe this was unintentional, but I felt like he was dressing in a way that would make the club, the audience members comfortable, the Grenwood Village audience members. Huh. And he, but he, man, he was dynamite. Yeah, he was, he was just great. like joke, 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 and you know maybe got a little unlucky with that number one spot. I don't know. I mean that that part is hard to say if that 
affects anything the judge I mean I don't think it necessarily affects the judge I'm not a judge so I don't know but um yeah he did great and then who, who, Noah Reynolds came up second yeah, if I remember God, and so funny. he's this guy is a he's just got the x factor there's just something I, I've never seen um, him do well anything other than an open mic just okay, which no, isn't I've, because he doesn't do a lot right. of stuff. I've seen him on a lot of showcases, out. and then and, that is him. Uh, he, I loved how he just won over the crowd. He was like they love, yeah. like he's he's very combative and. What, I don't but know. it's in a, it's in this kind of uh, sort of self-deprecating way that he's like, uh, damn it, shut up, uh, you know, and it's kind of like he's picking on himself in a way, and it's very, it's just very uh, relatable, very adorable, hilarious, and. Um, and he's just very original, and I, to me, like, he's a comics comic, um, so I just, yeah, I thought yeah. he was, uh, top-notch, and, um, there, there was, I'm trying to think, um, oh, he had the whole, um, he was doing act-outs and impressions, but it flowed, uh, with the whole set. Yeah, and, even the way uh, he got off, like, left the stage was yeah. funny. Yeah. Anyways, we don't need to go through everybody. No, no, yeah, and analyze but, um, it like a, but just yeah, sure. But, some people that it, that I yeah, it was it remember. was a fun show. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever been to a semifinals. I mean, stacked. What a, yeah. like national touring comedians to the best of the kind of Denver scene. Yep. And I guess uh, what my overall thing though, what I loved about this, um, and I, I went to last week's as well, and I noticed this is that um, everybody is just at, at a top level, but each each of the 11, per, nobody was like another person. You know what I mean? Like it was, um, excuse me, the food's coming back. Um, yeah, it, it was like 11 unique, it's like comparing apples to oranges, and yeah, I love that. And it kind of, uh, my round is uh, next week, okay. just almost a week from tonight it's actually a week from tomorrow night October 9th downtown club and it's gonna be the same thing everybody's just really strong in that lineup yeah and in my mind I kind of tell myself oh there's no way I'm gonna advance and it, that's just to allow myself to um, you know just take the pressure off and um, have fun because I've noticed that when I just have fun and kind of get all that stuff off my mind that I'm completely in the moment. I'm not in my head. Right. And you know what I mean? Have you, you're to the point, I'm sure, where you know you're up there and you're like, oh crap, I'm, now I'm in recite, it's recitation yeah. and I'm not. The I'm worst not thing for me speaking. is when I, I know that I'm not excited to be on stage. And that is mostly yeah. driven by drowsiness. When I'm tired, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... it's very easy for me to just like kind of sleepwalk through an open mic set. Like a day I'm always last night. mad at myself when I listen to the recording. Like, why couldn't I just smile, have a smile in my voice for two or three minutes? Like, dude, I know you sat there for three hours and you were <laughs> pissed off, but it, it, it wasted the whole night if you don't go up there and, and try and provide some kind of positive energy. People don't want to see somebody who's like, oh, these are my jokes. I'm sad and tired. Right sure, now. yeah, and people can feel that, but at the same time, um, it's it's a very valuable learning experience, you know. And that's yeah. how that's how that's how you do build this and uh, get better and better. Yeah, so it's like you, a, you know, it's like you said earlier. It's a muscle, and I need to improve my muscle of being able to turn on. Like yeah. I think A-list Hollywood actors, that's probably their best skill. Is no matter yeah. what's going on, when the director says go, they are bubbly and exact or whatever character they need to be right then. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, they were interviewing, um, uh, 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 what's the guy's name? Uh, William uh, Fickner. He's a great actor. Fichtner or Fickner. Um, just this great uh, character actor. And he talked about how, um, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, uh, we're, we're going in five or whatever. And he just had like a loss in his family or something like that. And they, these actors talk, and I'm not an actor, I don't know anything about this, but I thought it was like, wow, that was interesting that he said that he just took took that thing that he was struggling with, he didn't try to deny it and go up and put on a smiley face, he let that thing be there with it, 
and so the smiley face kind of had this, uh, you know, like this tension to it. And um, apparently it was like, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm babbling. <laughs> My point is, is that I kind of have done that um, where, like I was doing loonies um, last year and on the Saturday night show I got really nervous beforehand and in the past I would have tried to like resist that and go okay no I'm not nervous I'm you know and puff myself up well that night I go fuck I'm nervous man and I just said yes to that and I actually went on stage and I go hey all right loonies hey what good good to see you guys I'm Jeff I'm nervous as fuck what's going on man but yeah you guys are freaking me out is it me is it you and then that kind of like it got them on my side because they there's this thing about uh, congruency you know like if whatever's going on inside of you if you're trying to fight it the audience can somehow sense that oh you're not being real there's an incongruency you know right but like when you tell yourself okay just go with that thing you know yeah I'm sorry I talked over no, you no, no. I, it, you're, you're right you gotta be real and you and so anyways let's close up on the semifinals viewing that we just did sure sure did yeah. you find that valuable as a comedic learning experience did you get anything out of it um, yeah, yeah, definitely, because, you know, I, you know, looked for uh, certain things that I wanted to see how they handled certain things, and, like, I noticed that, um, you know, like, how one comedian handled uh, the tempo and the pauses, and, um, you know, like, Jacob Rupp at the end was just really great at that timing. His pauses are just... The, it's almost like this musical rhythm where you can almost feel the crowd energy start to kind of build back up and then he hits them with another punchline. Right. You know, and I, I really, uh, I value that. Yeah, for me, like, okay. like all 11 comedians, the host and the headliner, who is Nancy Norton, uh, all way better comedians than me. And anytime I can see a comedian that's better than me or talk to a comedian that's better than me, it, I feel like it makes me better. I can take something from their set. I saw sure. something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's something very interesting that I have to think on more. I made a note. I'm going to go back to my old notes. There was a trick that somebody did in their set that was unique to tonight's show, but, and I'm going to not even say a gender here, <clears throat> even though it's pretty biased. There was, I think, only one woman tonight on the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, two, but one competing. Yeah. Uh, yes, the headliner woman. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, this person, ambiguous gender, uh, did the same trick during their first uh, contest appearance. So, mm. I like, it's genius. It was really good. I really liked it. I also, like, I saw something, someone, I'm a mic out of the mic stand person, uh, uh. but I, I'm maybe not forever. And so I watch a little more carefully the people who leave the mic in the stand, and I saw a different trick that this one was... Uh, basically leaning forward with the mic stand uh, during a, like, leading up to a punchline. And uh, oh, sure, yeah. I, I think it was intentional, and it really worked, because it was like an audience focuser, and everybody was like hanging on the word that hit the punchline, and it was just, it was terrific. So yeah, I got yeah, that, nice. and, and who knows what else I got subconsciously. Like, those are just things that I definitely noticed. Uh, I thought it was great, and it was cool to say hi to some of the comics and talk Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it was we'll great. see some of my clients later. Yeah. Just a little bit. And yeah, I had a great time and uh, cool. yeah, thanks for taking me along and uh, Yeah, man. One, one more. Hold on. We got oh, yeah. We're not we're not Oh, I wasn't. Yet. Yeah, I didn't That's mean okay. To. okay. <laughs> How do we have 9 minutes left? Oh, wow. It's supposed to be 10 minutes. Oh, you mean two lines, two lines there? Yeah. Well, we yeah. little bonus time here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I what do you so what in a traditional format of this show or whatever it is I bring a comedian to an open mic and so we talk about goals for the open mic going into Lion's Lair do you have any goals tonight? yeah tonight um, I've been thinking about this all day I've got um, two jokes that are in my set for next week for the downtown contest oh, and the clean comedy search this coming Sunday I'm in that also um, awesome and the, the same jokes are there, and I'm really wanting to see if um, there, there's a... I have this new joke about... Um, I won't 
revealed the joke, the full joke. Sure. But the premise is that when I meet a new woman, you know, like I they, I want to give her the kiss test, you know, to see how like oh how how is that how are things actually going? Okay. And then there's a misdirect and all that. But then that joke, uh, I want to see if there's like a big callback, and and if it works, that could really anchor the set nicely. If you start with a certain nice. joke and your closing joke is the callback, it could right. pay, really pay off. Nice. So I want to see tonight and the next couple nights if it if that works, and if it doesn't, then you know I'll just stick with kind of what I have been closing on, and uh, it should be good. And I also want to. I, I'm kind of always working on this at open mics. I just feel like I can always slow down more mm. in general, you know? Cause yeah, I get nervous. I don't get the laughs that I'm expecting. Yep. And I just go yeah, a little we, too we, fast. We, we tend to wilt under that. It's a tough... Because you see the stairs and you're like, oh my God, they're judging me. And, you know, maybe they are, but, you know, like... There's certain comedians that I see at open mics that... Honestly, you could like cut. And, you could take a video of them and cut and paste it into Madison Square Garden because they're delivering their jokes like there are applause breaks, and I'm I'm jealous of that. Yeah. When it, when they do that and have that kind of stage presence, I'm just making sure we're still recording. Yep. Okay. And I will say that um, oh around around 2015, um, I noticed uh, so like Ben Kronberg who um, yep. you know I'd heard the name and I knew he was one of the you know like in the the old crew at Lion's Lair uh, back in the day with uh, Greg Baumhauer, Troy Baxley, who, by the way, Troy Baxley is the founder of Lion's Lair. That's a bit ah, of trivia and okay. great guy. But um, so Ben had been in, I think, Brooklyn, living there for quite a while, and then he started coming back more often around 2015, I want to say. And now I think he just lives back here, which is great to have him. He's a, he's like the most zen, you know, and original and hilarious and all that. But I, I just noticed that he would go up at open mics and it was almost like he would embrace the silence. I've never seen anybody do it to that extent. Like he, you could, he, he might have had 30 seconds of silence between one punchline and the next setup. And he would just be like either looking around, kind of messing with people with eye contact or he'd be like looking at his little notebook and just kind of, and I noticed what would happen because he was so confident with that, um, it would start to build. Because somebody, uh, Deacon Gray, the late Deacon Gray, R.I.P. Um, he he get, drew me this little when I was new to comedy. He drew me this little diagram. He goes, Here, here's the anatomy of a laugh. It's like you, here's the the punchline, and then the laugh. There's this wave, and it goes up here, and then it comes down. And you want to like wait till it's almost at the bottom to start into the next. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, setup, and uh, that ascending wave is like a balloon inflating. It's tension building. Yeah, and, and so and you can release it. Yep. And so, like Ben Kronberg, so the tension, building tension, actually starts to create. If you've ever noticed this, as the tension builds, you start to hear uncomfortable laughter at first. Then, when that person sort of keeps that going and you you can see that they are comfortable in that tension because most people aren't most people will freak out and break the tension early but like ben and other great comics they just ride that thing to the peak um and they let that uh sorry i'm getting tired and losing my train of thought <laughs> um letting that wave dissipate again and then they start another they hit you with another yeah. and he's it's just brilliant and, I, and i've I, only I seen a him a few times at open mics and he's very unique and original and i haven't quite i don't know enough about him and his comedy to really say anything about it other than i don't think i've seen anybody else do comedy like him uh yeah for sure and he's also very like the just the clever wordplay and the different literary styles that he infuses into his jokes. It's like, I watch that and I go home and like, well, pff, this is dog shit. And I th right. I'm tempted to throw my notebook away because I feel like oh, my jokes are dumb and stupid. And um, a, a friend of mine, uh, Jerry Corley, who you saw his uh, workshop, yeah, he told this me I, last week. I ran some of my jokes past him and he goes, 
no, your jokes, dude, your jokes aren't dumb at all, man. They're, they're clever, but they're simple. You know, you might think that they're dumb because you know the, you only have to go from here to here for the punchline to work. Right. So to you, that doesn't seem that clever, but most audiences, they don't know that. They don't know what you're, how you're getting there. Yeah. You know? Okay, so, we're out of time, unfortunately. Okay. We're turning on to Colfax. Uh, tonight, but real quick, what I want to work on, I have a whole new bit. It's like eight jokes that, that I've mm. never done anywhere. Uh, I haven't been at a mic in like a week, so I've had a lot of opportunity to write. So I just want to get through those. Probably, like I don't usually do this, but I'll probably bring a notebook up on the stage and kind of read from it. Huh? Uh, just because I haven't quite, uh, I haven't memorized it. And it's like, depending on how long I pause, two to four minutes of material. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to work on. And right almost on at Lion's Lair. And this is Jeff Cohn. Check him out. Uh, bye, everybody. Sayonara. Good to see you. See you next time.